of a surprise from the national selection panel, giving Fawad Ahmed a, a, uh, an opportunity. He's uh, obviously received a fair bit of publicity and, and the English press are expecting him to turn up in this Ashes series. Not to be, but he gets an opportunity here in this ODI squad and, and in, t in the T20 squad. Yeah, look, I don't know about a surprise because it's been brewing for some time, but this is his, the time for his opportunity. Uh, he played for the Australia A on the tour to UK. He played in Ireland and then in Bristol against Gloucestershire. And then he's been on this tour to Zimbabwe and South Africa, both four-day cricket and uh, 50 over cricket. Uh, and he's bowling well, so this is his opportunity and we're very keen to, to see him and see how he fares in uh, international cricket. So it's a wonderful opportunity for him. And he takes Xavier Doherty's place. But uh, Xavier has been a, a fine performer for Australia over the years. Um, and we haven't selected the side for India yet for the seven ODIs there in October. But it's likely that uh, both players will, will be on that tour. You obviously got a bit of a look, as you mentioned, of, of um, Bawad in, in English conditions recently. The, the panel must have been impressed with what they saw there. Well, I, I saw him bowl at Bristol and it was actually a bitterly cold, gusty day and it was very difficult for spin bowlers in particular uh, for uh, wrist spin bowlers. Uh, but he's been bowling very well in South Africa and turning the ball and uh, troubling the batsmen. So uh, we're keen to have a look at him. Is, this, uh, is his selection in this squad you know, perhaps part of a bigger plan from the, the, uh, the panel to, that might see him playing test cricket this summer? Well, I mean, he, he would be in contention for that. We'll see how he goes. Uh, he played in some shield matches at the end of last, the last Australian summer and bowled well and took wickets. Uh, so we're, we're just keen to see how he goes at international level. Uh, and he and, and a number of other spinners will be in contention as well. You mentioned Xavier Doherty there. He uh, must be you know, a bit disappointed. He probably hasn't done much wrong and might be seen as a pretty tough selection. Yeah, look, uh, he, he's very much a known quantity and he's a wonderful young man uh, and a very good cricketer. Um, but he can, uh, he can be hopeful that further opportunities will come his way. Josh Hazelwood returns after a, a little bit of an absence um, in, the, in the arena. He obviously played at the back end of the Australian summer in the, in the T20 squad, but he, he's probably going to get a bit more of an opportunity in this squad, do you think? Yeah, we're looking forward to, to him showing his wares in international cricket again. He made his debut in ODI cricket for Australia in 2010 at the age of 19. And three years later at 22, he's a, he's a stronger young man and a better bowler. And he's been very impressive in his form uh, in Zimbabwe and South Africa. Uh, I've been talking with Andy Bickle, who's the selector on duty uh, in, Z in Zimbabwe and South Africa. And Josh has been very impressive, has bowled with good pace, uh, good accuracy, and has been moving the ball. So we're, I think it's the right time for him to come through and uh, play or join the international squad. Mitch Marsh is uh, the other omission from the, from the Champions Trophy squad. Where is he on the radar now? There's obviously a few all-rounders uh, in this squad you've known. Yeah, look, Mitch is a 21-year-old, very powerful all-rounder who bowls very good seam-up. Um, he's got a very bright future. Uh, he just needs to perform. He just needs to, to get in, dig in there and make some runs, bowl well, uh, and through weight of performances he'll he'll win back a place, I'm, I'm confident. But he's certain, we've certainly signalled to him that he's a player of great interest to us and we really want him to, to come on and do well. Uh, as you know, it, uh, all rounders are invaluable. As you say, the, um, the all rounders are invaluable and there's a few of them in the squad with Watson, Faulkner, Maxwell and Coulton Nile. Can, can they all squeeze in there somewhere? Is it purely about... Well, players? we'll have them in the squad and then we'll work out the... Um, uh, how, it, how it goes. Uh, in the 11, I mean, uh, Coulton Isle is certainly a bowling all-rounder. Uh, he's a bowler who can hit well. James Faulkner is, is a bowling all-rounder and I'd describe uh, uh, Shane Watson as a, as a batting all-rounder. But we certainly need people who've, who've got both skills. Sean Marsh and Aaron Finch are both named in this squad. Are they both likely to feature across both formats? Or well, we'll, we'll wait and see on that. Um, I think for the T20s, which are the first, we've got two, 20s, two T20s against England, an ODI against Scotland, and then five ODIs against England. Uh, I would say Sean and, and Aaron Finch 
Uh, they're both very likely to play in the T20 games, uh, and we'll see what happens from there. Yeah, you mentioned uh, that, that the NSP is likely to cut the squad, will cut the squad after the, the T20. What are the possible yeah. scenarios there? Well, well, we'll just have to wait and see. I mean, essentially, we've looked at a squad of 15 for the ODIs, and then we've looked at a T20 team, a team of 11. Uh, so we brought three other players into that. Uh, and then we'll, we've got a little bit of flexibility. We'll see what happens at the end of August, because some people, you know, there might be some fitness issues, and there might be some particularly good form where, um, which might change our minds. But we've got a pretty good idea of who the 15 will be. But that's subject to change, uh, and we'll decide on the, right at the end of August. Ashton Agar has been highly spoken of in recent times, obviously getting a, a test debut here on the Ashes tour. Where does he fit into limited overs plans? For, for well, look, we just think for the moment, uh, the red ball cricket just for Ashton. Uh, he's, he's 19 years of age. He's played in Australia in domestic cricket. He's played both four-day and, and one-day cricket there. But just for the time being at international level, we're keen for him to just focus on the four-day cricket. Um, but it, it, you know, it might be in the foreseeable future that we consider him for the, for the one-day uh, team as well. Because he's well suited to that, of course, with his batting, because he's a wonderful striker of the ball lower in the order. Quite a few of the players in this squad have had some pretty decent preparation. Uh, you know, obviously Ashes series is um, something else, but you know, those outside of the Ashes have been preparing in South Africa. He must be pleased with the good preparation that they've had. Yeah, I mean, people like Glenn Maxwell. I mean, Glenn has bowled steadily, but he's he's had a, a couple of brilliant innings there. Um, so that's been very pleasing. Josh Hazelwood's done well. Aaron Finch has done well. Sean Marsh has done well. Uh, Farwed's bowled well. Um, yeah, look, it, it's been very good preparation for them. And uh, credit to the Cricket Australia administrators, they've timed this tour so it would lead into this ODI and T20 series. Also probably somewhat distant in the eyes of most cricket fans, the 2015 Cricket World Cup. Obviously in the mind of the selection panel though, probably not that far away. You know, is this squad a, a, an indication of perhaps maybe a broader group that you've got in mind? Well, we, when we select, we, we have the 2015 World Cup very much in mind. So there are some players there of the future. Uh, and all of those players we've selected, we, we think will be in strong contention for the 2015 World Cup, yes.